This is Dr. Yun over at St. John's, and we wanted to spend a few moments answering one of the most frequently asked questions. How long can a total hip replacement last these days? And we wanted to speak specifically about advances in material science, advances in polyethylene wear, which is a major component in the durability of a hip replacement. So this is a very important diagram and it shows the mechanics of the ball and the socket. So this is the socket and this is the ball. And very importantly, in between these is the polyethylene. And the polyethylene is a fancy word for plastic. This is the plastic that absorbs the load between the ball and the socket. So it's a crucial mechanical element. It's the softest part of a hip replacement and as a result of that, it's been the proverbial weak link in this system. But major advancements have been made over the past 20, 25 years that have completely changed the durability of hip replacement. So before we go into how the problem has been corrected, let's take a look historically at how hip replacements have failed by polyethylene wear. So we can see on this right side, the ball sitting asymmetrically within the socket. Now in a healthy hip, the ball sits centrally. There's polyethylene, there's plastic on both sides. When the ball moves eccentrically, we know a significant amount of that polyethylene has worn out and that hip has been leading to failure. So this problem of the polyethylene wearing out has essentially been solved in the past 20 years significantly extending the life of hip replacement. The major improvement has come from the field of material sciences. So this is polyethylene. This is modern cross-linked polyethylene. Polyethylene is long chains of polymers and traditionally they've been free floating and there was always a possibility that they could deform and wear. But a major advance occurred about 20 years ago where they were prepared with cross-linking. These red ones, these red marks are covalent bonds. These bonds solidly lock the polymer strands together, significantly increasing the mechanical strength and wear characteristics of the polyethylene. So it doesn't seem like those cross-links would be such a big deal, but they are actually so clinically important. They completely change the strength of the polyethylene and the durability of the polyethylene. They increase those characteristics by five times. They make the polyethylene last potentially five times longer than conventional or older polyethylenes. Older polyethylenes may have lasted 15 years. Newer polyethylenes can last 75 years or potentially even longer. We saw that in the laboratory when these were first introduced in 2000. There was very little wear, but we needed to prove that what we saw in humans also applied to what we saw in the lab. We reported the five-year results of polyethylene wear in people back in 2005. And we saw that there was very little polyethylene wear and that this gave us both the confidence to continue with this highly crosslinked polyethylene, as well as the hope that it might solve the problem of early hip replacement failure. But the real proof of the durability of polyethylene comes with the test of time. So if we fast forward 15 years later to modern day, we can see the current results as measured by our colleagues. This recent article won the American Association of Hip and Knee Surgeon Award. And this paper specifically asks, is highly, highly cross-linked polyethylene safe? And the answer resoundingly is yes. And it confirms what we saw 15 years ago and what we saw in the lab 20 years ago, that there is very little wear of these components. Another recent study looked even further. This paper released around the same time specifically looked at wear rates of polyethylene in patients who participated in high impact sports. 
And what they saw confirmed what we had seen in the other papers, that there was very little wear in this extremely active po population. Again, increasing our confidence about the long-term durability of this material. So I'll take you through some calculations so you can see in numbers or quantitatively what a significant effect this is. If we look at the older polyethylene or standard polyethylene, we see that it wore at a rate of 0.2 millimeters per year. And, and that's overall excellent. But over five years, we see one millimeter of wear. And there's about five to six millimeters of polyethylene in the liner. And so over 10 years, you see two millimeters of wear. And then over 15 years, you'd see three millimeters of wear. Over half the polyethylene is worn at that point. But with crosslink polyethylene, everything changed dramatically. There's almost a five times reduction. So at 0.04 millimeters, it doesn't sound like a big difference, 0.2 to 0.04, but this has tremendous implications over time. So if we have 0.04 millimeters per year times 25 years, that's one millimeter. So instead of one millimeter being worn at five years, it's 25 years. That means it takes 50 years to wear two millimeters and 75 years to wear three millimeters. So we can see these hips are most likely going to last a lifetime. They are not going to wear out at the polyethylene surface. So what does all this mean? The data looks really encouraging. The numbers look great, but what does it mean for patients? I think four main things. Number one, I think it means that with modern bearing surfaces, it's unlikely that a hip will need to be revised for polyethylene wear. Unlike first, second generation hips with the older or the standard polyethylene that wore out after 10 to 15 years, it is highly unlikely that modern hip replacements done with crosslink polyethylene are going to need revision for wear. The second thing that we're seeing is that these implants are extremely durable. Now you should always talk to the level of activity with your surgeon, but it appears that high impact activities can be handled with the polyethylene surface. Number three, these implants again are very durable, which means younger patients become reasonable candidates for hip replacement when necessary. A patient doesn't have to wait till they're 70 or 80 before they finally get their hip replacement. If they're in pain now, then proceeding is reasonable because these bearings are designed to last a lifetime at this point. And four, I think we can see from studies, from lab data, and from x-ray data that polyethylene in its crosslink form is an extremely durable and outstanding bearing surface. So I just wanted to show you what that looks like. Again, uh, this is a hip replacement we can see it's asymmetric. All this polyethylene has worn. There's at least three millimeters of wear. This polyethylene liner was removed. It pops out. We put a fresh shell in with highly crosslinked polyethylene. This one wore out after 16 years. This one is expected to last the rest of the patient's life. Okay, so wrapping up, just wanted to go over three last points. Number one, polyethylene is a crucial, critical part of a well-done hip replacement. It's the softest part. It's the part that traditionally wore out, but it's the part now that shows significant durability. Changes in manufacturing and processing have led to cross-linking, which have substantially increased the durability and wear characteristics. And three, most importantly, I think this means that these total hip replacements have the potential to last very long time, most likely a lifetime for the majority of patients. Thanks.